it's here. The Vizio P-Series Quantamax 2021 <coughs> has finally arrived. This is the TV that enthusiasts are expecting to leave budget competitors like TCL and Hisense in the dust while even punching up market against premium sets from brands like Samsung and Sony. It's got full featured HDMI 2.1 ports. Yes, my friends, 48 gigabit per second, 2800 nit peak brightness HDR. I'm expecting to be basically blinded if I get too close to it. And all kinds of great inbuilt features like Chromecast, for example. But can the real world experience hold up to all of that? Can't, or can it? Can I tell you about our sponsor? Go to joinhoney.com slash LTT to get the free browser extension that gets you the best coupon codes on sites like Amazon, eBay, Walmart, and more. We're gonna have that linked down below. Very convenient. I want to start like I always do, at the back. Oh my god. All things considered, for a full array local dimming set, it's not that thick. Mm. You can also see where they cut corners to make their aggressive $3,000 price point. Plastic chassis. How many zones is it though? This is the 75 inch version. Yeah. 480 zones. That's not bad. $2,000. The 86 inch version, which is new this year, $3,000, 792 zones. That's crazy. And that one's brighter. That one actually is 3,000 nits. And oddly enough, the 65 inch is also 3,000 nits. It's only the 75 inch that is 2,800. 200 nits short. Darn it, Vizio. I don't know why. We got power in over here. And then way the smack over on the other side, we got everything else. Your ethernet, your antenna. Uh, left and right audio, okay, HDMI times four, so only two of them are 4K 120 hertz, that's HDMI 2.1. Still got that composite input, optical and one USB port only. Can we just take a moment to marvel though that a 75 inch HDR TV is two grand? I mean, it depends on if the HDR is actually, I'm expecting it to be good. 480 zones, can we jump right into that? Hold on a second, before we do that, I need to make a little comment here. This. This thing, this is getting out of control. I get it, you know, there's money to be made for Vizio that helps to subsidize the cost of the TV, but I don't need a Netflix, Voodoo, Prime Video, Redbox, Hulu, Zoom, but I mean, what's what's next, hub button? Are these reconfigurable at least? Usually you'd have to get another app, but there's not even an app store on here, so I think you're probably SOL. That means shit out of luck. I love the OSD on this thing. It's so highly configurable. It is I actually for really, enthusiasts. I really like this, because it's like if you're ever wondering, like, is my shiz working? The answer is, well, as long as your shiz is stereo PCM, then yes. Picture mode, right? Calibrate, oh. So calibrated, we shouldn't make too many comments about the color, because this is an early engineering sample, and they said that one of the things that was early about it was how calibrated it would be. Got it, okay. Did they recommend bright? Is that why we're using that one? I think that's just the default. Uh, yeah, we're not gonna use the ambient light sensor. It's gonna be a little unfair. Some of the advanced options are really sweet. You can actually get down to judder reduction, which I wanna try with you in a minute, uh -huh. but you can also just totally calibrate it, go all the way down. Color calibration. Color tuner. Hey, there you Thank go. Thank you. Why doesn't everybody just do this? All right, input. What's watch free? Okay, now I have to know. It's on my remote, it's on, it's the second thing in the input menu. I think it's like a oh, lame. Nothing, nothing region locked should be having a dedicated button on the remote. What do you think of that remote? It's okay. I like the soft touch feel. The weighting is kind of weird. Like if I ever actually use the buttons, it's really top heavy. Kind of not, yeah, it's not that ergonomic, but realistically, I don't use my TV remote that much, so. That was a tactility. Fine. I'd say the D-pad is very good, but the other buttons are like, I'd say, okay. Ah, uh, that's not bad. So where you don't have that really, really sharp line between your bright object like the moon and your black object like the night sky, it's not too shabby. I noticed a lot of judder on the rotating earth. Yeah. Oh wow, that is a lot. Uh, we can adjust the judder setting. Okay, so judder reduction. Judder reduction is probably gonna make the picture darker because it's probably black frame insertion, like just strobing black in between. It's better. That's a lot better. So this is midway, this is at five. 
There That's, is still some judder, but it's not like sickening like no, it was. No, it's like cinematic now. It's not like disgusting and it looks like a mistake. It just looks more filmic. I'm totally okay with it the way that it is now. I can't say that I'm blown away by the brightness. Now, that 2800 nit spec is only on a 10% patch of the screen. Mm. It can't even do that on a whole screen flash, yeah, as was, far as I know. It's more like 800 or something like that. Well, sustained brightness across the whole thing is 800, which, yeah. which is fine. It still leaves an OLED in the dust. So one of the main issues on the PQX last year was banding. And one of the famous examples online that someone used was this red background in the Snoke scene of The Last Jedi. This actually looks really smooth. Now, I'm getting a little bit of halo effect around his hand here with the light reflecting off of it, but it's not distracting in any way from the image. And I really don't see anything that stands out to me as a problem here. As far as banding, you mean? Yeah. Ooh. Whoa. I tend to be a little more forgiving of these halo effects around text because that's not, it's not the content. I find it distracting and annoying, but I try to put it out of my mind because you don't buy a TV to read the news on it, you know? There's your full array local dimming. Oh, and I can see, it's not just the fact that there's a big halo around this small object. Can you see that, Linus? Around yeah. the ball, there's this little dirty... It looks like a comet. It looks like there's like a... An outer orbit. Like an outer ice kind of thing. Wait till the ball gets bigger. Like there's like a blue discoloration and there's like a brown discoloration. See that? Right there. Okay, when it's moving slowly... Yeah, it's almost less the, useful when it This moves white fast. edge is fine when it's moving slowly, but once this picks up in speed, you'll see that the leading edge will kind of brownify. See that? It's like a brown moon. But like, come on. Were we expecting it to be an OLED? No. It's a fraction of the cost. The colors look really good. And yeah. in fact, this actually will have better colors than an OLED. It'll have brighter colors and a wider coverage of the gamut. Previously, the last year's model had 85% coverage of the REC 2020 color gamut uh, due to the quantum dot enhancement film that's in there. And OLEDs do not have that. One of the big use cases for this TV, from my perspective though, is gaming, since it's one of the first sets you can get your hands on that will have official support for 4K at 120 hertz to go with those shiny new graphics cards that are right around the corner. So, but before we switch over to the PC, I think we should take a moment to appreciate how much snappier the OSD feels compared to their previous TVs. Like, this is actually pretty responsive. Yeah, it used to be really bad. Then there was a firmware update that made it better, but I think the new model is even better than that. Oh God, why? Why not? <laughs> oh, you have to register. Okay, don't judge the banding on this background. It's just a bad yeah. compressed background. Yeah, this feels like I'm at 60 hertz right now though. I sure am. Okay, so I'm gonna have to probably drop down to 1440p because unfortunately there aren't any HDMI 2.1 graphics cards yet. So there are adapters to go from DisplayPort 1.4 to HDMI 2.1. In fact, James has one right there because we tried it. Unfortunately, we were not able to get that working on our pre-production model because... The HDMI 2.1 4K120 ports on this unit right here aren't working right now because of firmware, but they'll work for you. Just bear in mind, if you do use one of these, you're gonna need a supporting graphics card that has Display Stream Compression 1.2. Okay, so that's RTX, or AMD cards 2019 and newer. Yeah. So just like we talked about with the Samsung Odyssey G9. Counter terrorists gonna win. Ba -ba 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 -ba. So because this is a VA or vertical alignment LCD panel, what we're looking for here is smearing, particularly of black values. If you're in a dark area and you move around quickly, uh, things like the edges of walls and stuff, things that are black can smear, or if they're not gonna smear, it's because there's gonna be a lot of pixel overdrive. And in that case, you can get overshoot, which is gonna be like a white kind of uh, corona, they call it. Not bad, I can see it a little bit on these ones. Oh yeah, there it is. Yeah. I would describe the input leg as pretty darn good. Like I'm, I'm gaming on this for sure, boys. I obviously, this is a terrible experience being this close to it, but it's a wired keyboard and mouse, so. This is interesting. Most of the image quality evaluation that we've done has been with devices that are plugged in via HDMI, but of course there is an ethernet jack on the TV and you might think plugging into a wired connection is going to give you, well, more reliable service with something like Netflix. But go ahead and hit play on that, would you James? Well, let's try to load it up. So load times are quick. You might say, oh, well, that's fantastic. 
Except that if you look a, even marginally closer at this image, I would be surprised if this is higher than equivalent to about 480p. It does not look good. And surprisingly, we had this playing for as long as three minutes at a time and it never snapped into 1080p or actually I'm subscribed to the 4K tier. That <laughs> sure ain't 4K. You ever see this movie? Still terrible. Yeah. How good is it? Oh, I didn't see, uh, wait, no, I did see one. Is it good enough to cover on Carpool Critics? Our movie podcast? <laughs> Shameless. What I actually want to do is go back on Wi-Fi. We got only three megabit per second on the wired connection. We're still getting three megabit per second on the wireless connection. We were getting 10 times that when we used Nvidia Shield wired. So it's not our internet here. No, we were getting 100 times that. This is only three. Oh God. It's really annoying because even LG's OLEDs have chipsets that only cap out at 100 megabit per second. These are high-end TVs. They really yeah. should upgrade them. This has been a problem for multiple generations now. Hopefully that'll improve with the final hardware and software. Look at this. Otherwise, you're gonna have to factor in the cost of something like a Shield or Roku or Fire Stick. Okay, so what's our, what's our bottom line here? You're saving some money on the display. I mean, this is an incredible amount of technology packed into a 75 inch display for $2,000. That's something that we really can't forget here. But obviously, you are making some compromises. The good news is that you can make up for some of them after the fact. Like for example, you pair something like this with an Nvidia Shield where you don't have to rely on Vizio's upscaling or Vizio's network connection and you can use Nvidia's AI upscaling and their networking connection and like all of a sudden you're looking at, wow, that's a, that's a big old TV. Now, I wasn't a huge fan of the way that fast moving white objects were not handled very well by the full array local dimming backlight, but unless you want to pony up for an OLED, there's gonna be some compromises there. If this is your picture quality range and your price range, then it's a good way to future proof, at least for probably 10 years, your setup, because when you get your new console, it's gonna work. It's gonna be ready to go. 4K 120. 4K 120 PC. And this is one of the first sets in North America to support all the major HDR standards, HLG, HDR10, HDR10+, and Dolby Vision. So you can find it down at the link in the video description where I'm sure James will also embed the latest episode of Carpool Critics, because he's shameless like that. And you know what I'm shameless about? Segwaying to our sponsors. What's in your online security toolkit? Adding a VPN lets you mask your IP and encrypt traffic to and from your devices, and private internet access has reliable service with thousands of servers in dozens of countries. They offer no bandwidth caps, configurable encryption with a kill switch to keep you in control of your connection, and when combined with private browsing, PIA can make websites think you are in a different country. Try it out risk-free with their 30-day money-back guarantee at the link below. You can connect up to 10 devices at once with clients for Windows, Mac OS, Android, iOS, and Linux. What are you waiting for? If you guys enjoyed this video, maybe you would enjoy the one where we checked out some smaller budget TVs that were more in like the $500, $600 price range, I think. Canadian, they were yeah. like four. Yeah. Super, super affordable TVs, if this is still a little rich for your blood. Smaller though. They are smaller though.